Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is gonna be about three often overlooked computer accessories that I find to be vital. I use every single one of these components or at least some variant of them just about every single day. And although I talk often about the exciting parts that go inside a computer, such as the processor and the graphics card, motherboard, memory storage, I don't often talk about the stuff that goes outside a computer, at least beyond the essentials like a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. So my three categories for today are going to be an external drive connecting device, which I have a few variants of right here, uh, a card reader, which you might think is kind of a given, but there are some things to consider when you're purchasing a card reader, and lastly, the vitally important, but again, often overlooked UPS, or uninterruptible power supply. So let's start with the simplest one, which I think would be the card reader. Now, if you don't use an SD card uh, for anything, I, I don't, I guess you must never take pictures. I take pictures, well, often video, very, very frequently. So recently, I have upgraded from uh, my 64 gig cards, which were doing just fine for me when I was recording 1080, to some 256 gig SD cards, which are very fast for the read and write speeds, uh, specifically for 4K, because 4K uses up tons and tons of space. Now, getting the data off of the SD card and onto your computer and onto a working drive where you can have it backed up and actually do stuff with it like editing uh, can take some time, especially if, again, you're recording at 4K. So one of the things I purchased very early on was this little USB 3.0 card reader, which is just an external unit, plugs in USB 3, and then it has a few different uh, reader slots around the outside, whether you're talking about compact flash, uh, or SD or some of the other variants that uh, aren't quite as common. Compact Flash is becoming less useful, but I got that when I was using my Canon 5D Mark II because it had a CF card in it. Uh, and then SD is pretty much what I use by and large for most everything. Um, now this card reader has worked quite well for me, um, even though again it's a pretty generic, uh, fairly inexpensive model that I got off of, e off of eBay, and I'll link this down in the description if you're interested. Uh, and the one thing I actually do like about this card reader is that it has a little USB uh, like just plug on it with a lead, so I can plug it in into a, like a narrow uh, like USB slot, especially if it's on the side of a laptop, for example, uh, and it won't block the other slots, so I thought that was kind of useful. Another one that I have right here is actually made by Kingston, and this is the uh, Mobile Lite G4. And I like this one because it has just the essentials. It's only an SD card reader, but it has both the uh, full-size SD card reader as well as the micro SD card reader on the other side. Again, USB 3, so it's nice and fast. A little bit sturdier as far as the design, so I will often chuck this into my backpack without really considering uh, protection for it, which it's held up pretty well so far. Um, the one thing that I don't like about this, again, is uh, that plug because it is fairly wide. So when it's plugged in, it can block slots next to it. But other than that, a very high quality one. And again, I'll link that one in the description if you guys are interested. Now, another option for uh, anyone who's looking for a card reader, especially if you're building your own system, is to go with one that's just integrated. So you don't have to worry about you know a little dongle or something that you're plugging in or plugging into the front or rear USB ports on the system. Uh, for that, I would recommend something like this. This is made by Enermax. It is the Mighty Charger ECR501, and it's a five and a quarter inch bay uh, uh, adapter, so it, you do need a five and a quarter inch bay in there, but it gives you a bunch of USB ports, which is kind of nice, including a USB 2 as well as USB 3.0, as well as a high amperage USB 3.0 uh, for fast charging, but then it's also got that card reader built into it. Pay very close attention if you're buying something like this, that the card reader itself connects via USB 3.0, or even more ideal, if you're looking towards the future, USB 3.1, those are just starting to come out onto the market as well. You'll find a lot of card readers will have USB 3.0 ports right next to them, but the card reader itself will have a USB 2.0 connection, and that can more than cut in half your transfer times, especially if you're dealing with large files like 4K footage being transferred off of an SD card. So there are some card reader options for you guys, and I would especially recommend this if you're still relying on the old USB 2.0 card reader that came uh, integrated into your laptop or as part of your case because upgrading to something like this will definitely be worth your while. The next device I'm going to talk about here is what I'll call an external drive adapter because if you watch my channel and if you work a lot with computers, chances are you're going to end up being a tech support person for someone in your life, whether it's a friend or a family member, uh, at some points. And often those people will have old drives that you need to connect up somehow. And uh, this is in particular going to help out with older 3.5 inch drives, especially ones that have an IDE connector. Does anyone even still use those? Yes, you'll have someone who comes along with like a 
eight or 10 year old computer and they want you to pull data off of it or something like that. And it can be a real pain in the ass unless you have something like this. So I'm gonna go from my older and less elegant solution over here up to something that I think is a little bit more uh, svelte, shall we say. So this was my old uh, external drive adapter and it came with a couple different parts. One was a wall wart just to provide some power. And this actually comes over with a little adapter here and plugs into this guy, which is just a little on off switch and a pass through uh, and that adapter, which can then plug into uh, this little splitter here. Oh, actually this has, has this little splitter coming off of it. And that has a Molex plug as well as a floppy connector on it. So the Molex plug I could use to just plug in any Molex drive and provide power to it, which is actually pretty convenient in some situations. I've used this to plug in like a, an optical drive just to eject it and get the disc out or something like that. Uh, but once that's connected for power, then I can take the power plug from the Molex and either plug it directly into the drive or that floppy connector and plug it into this and then that will pass power through this device. And this is actually what connects up the data for the drive. So it has IDE and a couple different flavors on two sides here, whether you're looking at the uh, notebook form factor size or the full size 3.5 inch one. And then of course a standard SATA adapter with full size SATA power and data plug on that. So I can use that to plug in newer drives that have the SATA connection standard. And then of course, just a USB 2.0 plug that goes over there. So this again, inelegant, but it will allow me to take something that's quite outdated, such as an IDE drive, and still plug it in via USB 2.0 to a computer so I can access it and pull data off of it. And if you're dealing with a really old system and it's you know got problems and it doesn't boot up right or something, but you still need to pull data off of it, connecting just the drive up to something like this is a great option, but again, inelegant. So let's move on to something that's a little bit more practical and a little bit more, uh, well, user-friendly, which is what we like to call toasters, something like this. Again, USB 3 instead of USB 2 on this one. Uh, and then it's got a little slot that the drive drops into. And uh, this one won't work for IDE, it's SATA only. But if you deal with a lot of SATA drives, basically you just drop the drive in like that, engages the SATA power and data connectors. And then on the back you have a USB 3 uh, type B cable that plugs in over to the computer. And then of course a separate power adapter to provide power. And I like this one because uh, it's worked really well for me so far. It's an off brand, but uh, also has a power on off button. And I like that just to be able to, I can turn it off while still leaving the drive in and the drive won't be spinning and making noise and being hot while I'm not using it. So there is option number two. Option number three, uh, which is my favorite because again, just simplicity, it's just a little USB 3 adapter like this. Again, SATA on one side, a USB 3 on the other, and it's actually got a little double plug on this side so that theoretically, if you plug it into a USB uh, port that doesn't have enough power available, you can plug that into another USB port, get more power and power up the drive. Now this will probably only work for smaller drives, 2.5 inch drives that are made for uh, laptop and notebook use or SSDs because they use a lot less power, but plug it in like that, plug the other end into your computer, and then you're good to go. I use this as an external drive, much as I would like I would use a thumb drive, except it's connected to a one terabyte SSD, and it's like the best, fastest external thumb drive that you could possibly ever get, uh, except maybe some of the Thunderbolt options that are out there, of course. Um, and I actually will edit off of this. I'll, I'll put raw footage and just edit off of it on a laptop while I'm on the go. Again, that does have limitations because, for example, if you have a larger drive, like a uh, five and a quarter inch optical, it will not have enough power to power that so you can eject and everything unless you're using, again, a slim drive that's made for a notebook. And then uh, it probably won't work for 3.5 inch drives either. These just require a little bit more power. And then, of course, you don't have the connection there for the older IDE if you need that. So, again, a variety of options available here, but uh, choose the one that best suits your needs. And finally, the UPS, uninterruptible power supply. What this is, is basically a big old battery that you plug into the wall that keeps itself charged and then you plug your vital devices into it. And then if you have the power go out or if you trip your circuit breaker, your system computer will still have power that allows you to get a bit of extra work done or most, most likely just shut everything down properly so that you don't lose any information or have an improper shutdown. I just got this one during Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales from Cyber Power. Cyber Monday, Cyber Power? It's a conspiracy. This is a gaming system battery backup, which means nothing. Gaming is just a, a purely a marketing ploy for this, although I guess they're listing how long you can run an Xbox or a PlayStation 4 and a big screen TV. Like, you know, if your power goes out and you're like, no, I, I must continue playing video games. That's my only option. 
Let me pull this out real quick. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty typical UPS, at least for home use, and you can usually get a uh, UPS that would be good for home uh, for around 80 to 120, maybe upwards of 150 to 100 or to 200 dollars, depending on how much power it's able to supply and how big the battery is. So um, if the power does go out and it's drawing from the battery, how long that will typically last. So usually you plug them in, hit the power button and turn them on, which will the theoretically turn it on if the power is on isn't happening here maybe oh there we go gotta hold it in for a second uh, and then up on the front it's got a couple USB to our USB ports so you can charge stuff off of that if you need to that's uh, um, a more modern uh, addition to UPS's um, not much to see other than that again it's just a big old battery in there and then most of uh, the action is over here on the back where you have, for example, a USB connection, so you can connect this straight up to your computer. Uh, this is more for a situation where you'd have it connected to like a server or something like that, where the server could communicate with the UPS, detect if there was a power outage, and then the ser server would shut itself down automatically in the event of a power outage. You can also uh, route your network through here, if uh, that's something that you want to do, as well as coaxial cable. And then a bunch of plugs, some that are labeled as battery and surge, some that are also labeled as surge protector. So this is also like a really high-end surge protector. It will clean and filter the power that's coming out of uh, your wall socket to provide more stable juice to whatever uh, devices you have connected up to it. And that's pretty much it. Um, if your power doesn't go out often, it's still very possible to trip a cir circuit breaker by overloading it with too much stuff on there. These are the accessories that it came along with. And just to close with a quick anecdote, uh, the time that I found a UPS to be most, use, most useful for me, uh, well of course is when the power goes out and you're working on something and your computer doesn't shut off, you're like, oh my gosh, I have time to save or whatever. But I actually, uh, back when I lived in an apartment, we had power outages fairly regularly. And the power would go off to the entire section of the apartment, but what I found was I could connect my modem and my computer, uh, like, you know, just the computer and the screen up, my UPS had enough power to power those, and even though the power was out to the apartment complex, as long as the modem had power, it was still able to get the uh, data connection from wherever the node was set up. So I still had internet and a workable computer, at least for, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, even though the rest of the power was out in the entire apartment. And I thought that was kind of cool. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Did this one in a slightly different style than I typically do. Uh, it was a little more off the cuff. But let me know what you thought of it. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Links, again, to all of these things, or at least whichever ones are still available for sale, are down in the description. And we'll see you in the next video.